folks welcome to son of dell's life vlog on sunday the 8th of january my first vlog for the new year and it's a cracker i have got two book reviews i've got two tv series reviews i've got my christmas haul which is everything that i had for christmas i've got an unboxing of a jigsaw box for gibson's for january and i've also got a surprise box as well also there's bits and bobs in there there's my jigsaw gallery i've done a couple of thousand piece jigsaws uh, but yeah, coming up first, it's the unboxing of the Gibson's Jigsaw Advent, uh, Advent Calendar, I nearly said that. The Gibson's Jigsaw Subscription Box for January 2023. Here you go, one Gibson's Jigsaw Box came the other day now I weren't expecting anything special because I've just had a cracking jigsaw uh, with the Christmas one as you know which came with the Christmas decoration as well so that was even better now this one has got it's a cool design actually I like it. it's called Hackney Bridge or Hapney Bridge and as you can see it's quite it's quite a nostalgic one if you look at it it's quite um yeah it's modern but it's clever because it incorporates everything really there's dogs on there there's a cat on there there's a person in a wheelchair on there which you don't see very often on jigsaws and it's called Hegney Bridge by Elizabeth Bluestan or Bluestein B-L-U-S-T-I-N and it's from Gibson's as you can see Gibson's and once again I reiterate the fact that they are doing their bit for the planet because no jigsaw comes in plastic there is a minimum amount of packaging and I think even even just let me find this out now they use the thickest puzzle board available ensuring pieces lock firmly into place and they're made using 100 percent recycled puzzle board so a big thumbs up to gibson's there for that so hackney bridge by elizabeth blustin is the gibson's jigsaw for january 2023 So we've got an unboxing there. Um, I'm now going to talk about a bit of what we've been doing since I last spoke to you. Well, obviously we've had the new year, so happy new year to you. I hope it's going great. Unfortunately for us, it's not going so great. We've lost a very, very dear friend of ours. Um, he passed away just after new year and we are very, very sad. We are very uh, upset. He's always been a part of mine and Deb's life. Well, he has for the last 18 years. 18 years we've known this gentleman and his name was Mick Dolby uh, or Mike we always called him Mick um, and he basically was like a father figure to everybody he really was he was one of them them gentlemen who once you meet him you have a couple of words with him and within five minutes you're laughing or he's buying you a pint he, he was that kind of guy now he's had health problems for the last few years and to be honest with you um, how he's done as well as he's done he's made it to 81 and that's that's big what's it for him definitely you know a, a big thumbs up to him but unfortunately he's passed away now so this is kind of like um a bit of a talk really about how what i said before christmas about don't get don't start you know saying oh i'll do this i'll do this i'll go see this person when i'm there blah 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 and all this sort of stuff go now because tomorrow isn't promised you know um i've said it before and obviously with mick he was ill yes he definitely was ill but when the call came it was still a massive shock to me and my wife deb uh, and even my mother-in-law who did, who hardly knew him she, she's only met him what a handful of times and it was quite sad you know because he was a lovely bloke he really was i mean he's, he's got his faults everybody had his faults and there'll be those people who you know didn't like him but to me he was a real good character a real gentleman and he paid me one of the best compliments i've ever had in my life um, in 2005-06 we met him and we went on holiday with them to Cornwall we had a fantastic week and it was brilliant it was literally the best holiday you could hope for even though for the entire week it was throwing it down with rain there wasn't a day it didn't plaster down uh, but we had a brilliant time we literally covered almost every part of Cornwall possible from Land's End to Bodmin Moor we went all the way we went all down the, on the uh, south coast we did Lou we did Polpero uh, we did Mevergissi, we did everywhere you could think of, Padstow, all them places, Charleston. And when we came back, because it was a fantastic holiday, I've still got the pictures from it, and uh, I'll be showing some of them at a later date just to show what a fantastic time we had. 
and when we mentioned to Mick a couple of years ago you know was he going to go back down to Cornwall ever again and he actually paid a compliment and said he wouldn't go anywhere without me and Deb he said he would never go down to Cornwall without me and Deb because we made the holiday he said he knew that wherever I was there was always a laugh we were always going to have a joke I was always going to have him crying with laughter and that was a massive compliment to me because when me suffering with anxiety and stuff and being a bit more withdrawn than I used to be I'm not the life and soul of the party no more but for him to say that meant an awful lot to me it really did and um, to, da to Deb to be honest with you he was like a second dad because over because Deb's dad lived over the other side of the country and Mick was always there you know Mick was Mick was part of our lives for a good 15 years um, and I'm glad that when he went he was at home he was with his partner Peter so you know he went with people that he knew and he loved and he's going to be a very very much missed man he really is um, I mean my sisters when I told my sisters what they, they couldn't believe it they were literally gobsmacked you know because he's always been around Mick as he seems like I've known him all my life but I haven't I've only known him for 18 years uh, but he was just one of those characters he was lovable he was funny he was friendly I don't remember him having much bad to say about anybody and the other thing that I love about him was he was always smiling nothing got him down even if he was having a bad day he would still smile he would still laugh when a joke hit him he would still find things funny so this is a bit of like um, a bit of a memory thing for Michael Dolby who passed away uh, I, I, I'm still like I say I'm still coming to terms with this and I know his family are really really heartbroken his uh, son Tony and his uh, son's wife Michelle and also um, Mick's ex-wife which is Janet Dolby which is obviously Tony's mum and um, they're all in pieces they're all in bits nobody can get their head around it so 2023 has not started off a good year at all uh, other than that really we haven't done much we went downtown and as you can see I've had a new haircut new year new hair uh, if ever you're in Blackpool or the surrounding areas and you want a good haircut I can recommend RDS hairdressing it's just behind Abingdon Market in Blackpool Town Centre and the guy who owns it is called Mark well actually he's not called Mark he's called something else but we call him Mark always have done and the guy who does my hair Frankie he is absolutely brilliant I don't even go in with a style in mind I'll just say to him have that do what you think suits me and he's never let me down yet and the prices are really really good because my wife had her hair chopped quite a lot now she had really long hair she had it chopped washed cut styled everything I had mine washed uh, dried styled cut and all that and all of it in total was only 50 pound and that was in total for two really decent haircuts and like I said you're, you're offered a cup of coffee and a cup of tea and all that sort of stuff and they're really nice and friendly you, you can't fail to get on with them they are that good a company and they're called RDS hairdressing and this isn't a, a paid plug they don't even know I'm mentioning them but if you ever get a chance and you're in Blackpool and you've got a decent you know you want a decent haircut RDS hairdressing behind Abingdon Market in that in Blackpool Town Centre there you go Mark mentioned you mate <laughs> but yeah like I said I've been doing a lot we've been watching a bit of TV I've got a couple of TV reviews coming up in a minute now one is for a series that we watch well a uh, series yeah a se four part mini series we watched called Riptide and that was on Channel 5 over Christmas and the second one was Christmas Carol now it isn't the Christmas Carol you think this is Christmas Carol and on the Carol there's an E at the end and it starred Saran Jones and it was on on Christmas Eve on Sky Max if I'm not mistaken so coming up I've got those two reviews Now Riptide was a very very strange one because it was set in Australia and the cast was half Australian half English uh, and it was really um, a, a very strange it was only in four, uh, four parts yeah it was four parts Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and Friday and we watched it I think the thing that lets it down is right at the end of the second part it shows you who's responsible for what's gone on so after that it's kind of just like waiting for them to find out sort of thing now it's very clever it's a bit slow it drags on a little tiny bit and there's a lot of stories in there and bits that won't make sense because some of it didn't make sense to me but it's not a bad thriller I can't give it more than four out of ten I can't 
um, I, I thought about giving it more but no four out of ten it's not got a bad story there's a few little holes in it it's not like a colander but it's getting there you know um, good cast not too bad at all the acting wasn't that bad the characters were believable and the settings were absolutely beautiful lovely picturesque areas in Australia I think um, so I would give that one four out of ten and that was called Riptide now every year me and my wife manage to watch something kooky even if we don't want to we end up watching something kooky that we didn't know was going to be as mental as it was now on Christmas Eve we taped a thing called Christmas Carol with Suran Jones in it and also Rob Benton was it Rob Benton yeah I think it was Rob Benton somebody Benton I think it's Rob Benton anyway. Anyway, uh, he was in it. And basically the gist is uh, this Christmas Carol owns a shop that uh, basically owns a business that makes tat. In other words, you know the stuff that you get in um, before Christmas, like cheap reindeer antlers that snap so you need three pairs before Christmas, you know, make them for a pound, sell them for seven quid, that kind of thing. And she isn't bothered about Christmas. She hates Christmas. She doesn't want anything to do with it. Um, and it's basically a tale on the Christmas tale, the Christmas Carol story. Uh, she gets visited by her mother and told that three ghosts will come and visit her, blah, blah, blah. Old story, you might think, yeah, okay, been there, done that. The genius of this is the ghost of Christmas past. Now, whoever wrote this has got a sense of humour. Now, bear in mind that the Saran Jones' character, her childhood would have been the late 70s and all the, most of the 80s. So the brilliant thing they had playing the ghost of Christmas past was Morecambe and Wise. Now anybody who knows UK television knows that Morecambe and Wise were on our televisions every year in the 70s and 80s, literally. They were always there at some point, whether it was repeats or live shows, they were always on. And they've got Morecambe and Wise playing the part of the Ghost of Christmas Past, and it's very cleverly done, it really is. Um, and the Ghost of Christmas Present is actually played by Joe Brand. Now, the Ghost of Christmas Future, I do not know him. I've seen him around, but I do not know the guy's name. He's an Asian guy, and I don't know his name. So the gist is, he gets visited by these three. But there's a lot more to the story this time. It's not, oh, I'll go back, Tiny Tim's ill, I'll make sure he's all right, I've had an epiphany and all that stuff. It all makes sense at the end, and it's a really, really good Christmas thing. But it's absolutely mental. It really is. It is mad. It is mad, but as Christmas goes, I would definitely give it 7 or 8 out of 10. I'll go for 7. I'll give it 7 out of 10. Because it's just absolutely Christmas all over, but it's mad. I've never seen a Christmas carol done so strangely. Um, but like I said, whoever, whoever picked Morecambe and Wise to be the ghost of Christmas past was a genius. An absolute genius. So that's um, Christmas Carol with an E at the end. And I would give that 7 out of 10. It was on Sky Max and it was on on Christmas Eve. And I think it was on about half past 9, 9.30 I think. So yeah, them are my two TV reviews. Coming up, a new unboxing. I've got a new unboxing. You haven't? I have. Okay. Right, it's this one. Now you might think, what the hell is that? Now as you can see... What it says there is it's $9.99. What you can't what you might be able to read is it says minimum retail value £25. Pop culture, licensed merchandise products from TV, film, music, gaming, and much more. Now I thought in for a penny and for a pound. I was in HMV in town. And they had these mystery boxes for £10 each, and I thought, well, I haven't had a mystery box and I don't want a subscription. So Deb said, why don't you have one? I'll buy you one. So she bought me one. Now, obviously, I bought one so that I can show you the, the, what, what's actually in them. And I'm quite surprised, actually, because I thought it might just be a load of tat. Now, the first thing I pulled out, now you might think this is tat, but I think it's ace. And as you can see, it's a pencil. But it's a minion pencil. <laughs> and as you can see, it's got a fluffy head. It is a proper pencil. It's not like a geeky one or nothing. It's a proper pencil, and it's a minion's pencil. So that was the first item that was in the Mystery 999 box. Now the second item I pulled out, I thought this was cool, even though I won't wear this, I think it's cool for the fans, um, a game called Call of Duty, and they put this in it, and it's basically, I'll show you anyway on the back, you'll be able to see on the pictures there, them are the things you can use it for, you can use it on your neck, to keep your neck warm, you can use it up to there, so it covers your face and your nose, you can wear it as a headband, or you can wear it further down, it's up to you, and basically it's a Call of Duty uh, like a neck wrap type thing and as you can see Call of Duty 
So it's a good franchise, everybody knows the game, I would have thought. And that was the second item. There was five items in total. Now this I love, even though I've never watched the series. Now if you've ever heard of a series called Squid Game, this was in as well. This is actually a Squid Game keychain. And I don't know what that represents, but I think it's one of the characters out of Squid Game, I'm guessing. He's got like a triangle for a face. And it's quite, it's a hard one. No, it's not like um, a floppy soft one. It's really good, hard, durable stuff, that is. Uh, and that was the third item. So it was a Squid Game keychain. Now, the fourth item I pulled out was this, and I thought this was great as well. It says, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal, and a Happy New Year. And it said, a Home Alone Christmas mug. Well, I hadn't got a Christmas mug. I've got lots and lots of mugs, but I hadn't got a Christmas one. So this is my new Christmas mug for next year. And like I say, it's official merchandise. You've got Home Alone there. You've got Kevin and the Wet Bandits on top. And uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. That was the fourth item. And the fifth item, this is my fave, is a Goonies notepad. Now, it's not an ordinary notepad. Let me just try and get in it because I, I sealed it the other day. Because when you open it, you open it, you take the book out, which said book, which is a really good book. I'll just show you the quality as well. Uh, good decent line pages with the Goonies logo at the bottom, as you can see. But what appealed to me, because I'm a really big kid, is it comes with a set of stickers. <laughs> you get Goonies stickers with it, with little alphabets at the bottom there, so you can personalise it, and you've got scenes from the films that you might be able to focus on, I'm not sure, you might be able to. And obviously the Goonies as well, you know, all that. And that was the fifth item. So as you can see, I got a Goonies notepad. I got a Call of Duty face wrap, neck wrap thing. I got a Home Alone mug. I got a, po a Pokemon, and they said Pokemon then. I don't know what I meant by A Minions, Minions pencil. And I also got a Squid Game key ring. And all that for 9 99 well, let's be honest, you can't really buy much for 9 99 these days. Now, if you're interested, they do them online as well. And they do another one for 24 99 and that's a Funko Pop one. There's Funko Pop mystery boxes as well. Um, I might try one of them and let you know what it's like. But that is a 9 99 mystery box from HMV, and you can buy them online.
right, I've got a couple of book reviews now. It's all reviews today, isn't it? Right, the first review is a book called The Twelve Dells of Christmas. Now, The Twelve Dells of Christmas is David Jason at his best. He's basically uh, anecdotes and stories linking him to Christmas over the years because Christmas has played an integral part in his life, even though he doesn't actually like Christmas, it says in the book. Strange one. Um, but everything's in there from the 50s when he was watching his first, uh, doing his first pantomime and stuff, all the way through to the modern stuff, which is your 2020s, believe it or not, 2020. Um, and there's some really funny stories in there. You know, there's some really, st the stuff that I didn't know about uh, to do with Only Fools and Horses, to do with Touch of Frost, to do with everything else he's been in, because obviously he's been in quite a lot. There's, a love, there's some lovely anecdotes from um, Open All Hours. Uh, and his time with that. There's a brilliant part where he actually met Tom Cruise. Yes, I'm not. I'm not lying. The part where he meets Tom Cruise in midair is quite funny. Uh, but yeah, it's a really, really good book, and I love anything by David Jason anyway because I'm a massive, massive fan of his. Um, and I would definitely give it eight out of ten because it's a good read. It's festive. There's a lot of funny stuff in there. Sometimes he thinks he's more of a storyteller than he is. Um, he starts going off on tangents and different things and that can let it down a little bit but all in all I would definitely give it 8 out of 10 it's a really good read now the second book is another biography and it's a biography by a footballer who played for Liverpool for some time and it's called oh, sorry and it's by Jamie Redknapp and it's called How to Be a Footballer now what I love about this book is it's a pure football his life to do with football because literally from the age of I think it was five onwards he was kicking a football and what it doesn't do is it doesn't cover his personal life which I'm glad of because too often you will read a biography of a footballer or of an actor or whatever and he talks about his private life too much rather than the subject matter which is obviously football because it's called how to be a footballer now I love it because it's got loads and loads of stories in there about his first days, the hard training, how he settled in at Liverpool or didn't settle in, the tricks that, you know, he had tricks played on him and all sorts of stuff. And it's really, really interesting read. Now, Jamie Redknapp, like I said, he's very... He's one of those footballers that played brilliantly and was a fantastic footballer, but he wasn't always in the papers. He wasn't always in the limelight until his personal life kicked in. And once his personal life kicked in, I think that sort of overshadowed a little bit his football life but it's a brilliant book like I said it's all about his football career and I would again give this one 8 out of 10 because it's a fantastic read um, I read it in two days it's a really good hardback book and I got a signed copy so uh, coming up next my Christmas present roundup now lots of Christmas presents to get through so I'll try and be as quick as possible. I've had everything. You got you name it. Somebody somebody bought it for me. Whether it be jigsaws, which you saw in my previous vlog, so I'm not going to show them again. If you want to see my jigsaws I had for Christmas, they're in my previous vlog, all ten of them. Now I'll start off with Funko Pops. I had three Funko Pops. The first one, good old Father Christmas from the Coca-Cola adverts, and it's actually Coca-Cola Santa. It's called so that's Coca-Cola Santa. And that was one of the first things I opened, actually, when I opened my presents. That's one of them. Now, the second one, this goes with it, and I love this just for the, just for the shades. If I can get the shades on picture, I will do. This is the 90s Coca-Cola polar bear. And if you look closely, you can see the shades he's wearing. They are well cool. And you better picture on the back, actually. And that's the second item. That's another item I had, and that's the Coca-Cola one. Now, this third one was off my nephew, um, Oliver. Now he knows I'm a big 80s fan and I'm, I'm actually collecting the, uh, the Funko Pops of the uh, singers from the 80s and he managed to get me Roger Taylor from Duran Duran. Um, as you can see, uh, there's, there's all five of them available. I'll be getting the other four to go with it so that I've got the full set. But that's Roger Taylor from Duran Duran. Now this, I absolutely love whoever bought me these. These are brilliant. These are, you'll like these. These are actually a set of vinyl coasters just a nice little box look but when you open it when i can get in it hold on a minute i had a job last time hold your losses i've got to figure out how you get in it ah there you go hold on 
I'm in. <laughs> and they are actually vinyl records coasters. They are absolutely brilliant. Let's have a look at them. And what I love is on this each record there's titles. Now bear in mind they're for coasters, so they're for your teacups. Rest on me by the nostalgics. Protect the surface. Cover and protect. No marks on the table. That's one of my favourites. No marks on the table. Tea time. And the last one is too hot to handle. And they've all been nicely decorated. You know, they've all got different designs on the front of them. As you can see, one, two, three. That's not easy to do. Four. Five and last but not least, uh, 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 six. So they're all nice, nice little box set that of coasters. Um, and I love my nostalgic stuff, so that's absolutely perfect for me. I had this off my very, very good friend and the person who lost their father the other day, and it's a brilliant uh, bookmark. As you can see, it's a dragon. Let's see if it can focus in. Will it focus? It might focus, it won't focus. Okay, how about if I do that in front of my head? Hey, oh, it kind of focuses. It's a dragon. It's a dragon bookmark and it's metal. It won't bend, it's metal. I had a couple of DVDs. Now this one, this is funny because when I, when my friend got married, well, my best mate got married um, last September, we ended up dressing in suits and we ended up looking like Mr Bean. We did look like Mr Bean. And somebody's bought me the complete whole Bean DVD collection and it's a 12 disc set and it's got all live action series, the animated series, Bean the Ultimate Disaster Movie and Mr Bean's Holiday and that's in a box set of DVDs. So I've got that to watch. I've got stuff to watch, stuff to eat, stuff to drink. These were brilliant. These, <laughs> these are off my wife. I've not seen anything like this. Have you ever heard of socks that don't match on purpose? Because these, these are actually called stress heads. I think they're called stress heads because you can't get them out. Hold on a minute. There they're coming, they're coming. These have got some of the weirdest cookies designs you'll ever see on socks. There's actually six in there, right? So there's three pairs of socks, but none of them match. They're all completely odd. And they're called stress heads. I'd never heard of them. But if you have a look on the back, them are the six socks what are in there. But none of them make a pair so you can mix and match and mess about all you want. A cool idea, isn't it? I'd never seen them before. My wife found them, and I was kind of like, Oh, never heard of them. Stress heads. I thought it must be something to do with um, mindfulness or something like that. But when I saw the socks, I was kind of like, Okay, that's different. This is one to go with my collection, definitely for my collection. I'll try and focus on this if I can. It's not always easy, though. Right. It's an Only Fools and Horses commemorative coin set. I lift it up, they all fall out. Here they would. They always fall out. One. Just put them in so you can see them. Two. Three. And as you can see, they're only fools and all these 50 pences. It's a commemorative coin set that my wife bought me. It's an official product and all. Um, as the to say that it's an official product. It's not off wish or nothing like that. And my wife bought me those as well. So, I've got some more Only Fools and Horses memorabilia to go with me, 5,000 other things I've got. The customary Links gift set, which I never ever get fed up of receiving because, let's be honest, we always need deodorant and we always need shower gel, so that is something I will never ever get fed up of getting. Links set, and it's a nice fragrance as well, it's the gold one, gold Links. This, <laughs> my wife got me because I, if you've seen in a previous vlog, I built Father Christmas and Mrs. Claus from Lego. And my wife has actually got me the reindeer and the elves to go with it in Brickheads. So I'll be building that probably next year actually. I'm not sure, I might build it this year yet. But it's a Brickheads double figure set. And it contains what you can see on the back there. The reindeer and the elves, Mr. and Mrs. and all that stuff. And I also had another one of my favourites from the um, 80s, 
after Heidi High had finished, uh, the entire cast almost moved over to make this, and it's your Rang Lord. And this is the box set of all the series, all four series from start to finish. And it, it has some fantastic cats in there. You've got Paul Shane, you've got Sue Pollard, uh, you've got Jeffrey Holland, um, amongst others. I mean, let's be honest, you've got so many people in it. It's, it's like a, a Paul Shane, Jeffrey Holland, Sue Pollard, Donald Hewlett, Michael Nose, Bill Pertwee, Brenda Cowley, Mavis Pugh. You know, there's, there's some right stars in it and some, some of the capers that they get up to is brilliant. I've seen it all, but to own it on box set is brilliant. So I've got your Rang Malone box set. And I've had uh, a book as well. I've had a couple of books actually. This is the first book. A biography of Roger Moore. Now I don't know how you can fit all his life into that. But they must have done. And it's called Last Man Standing. Uh, Tales from Tinseltown. So it's obviously stories he's got from when he became an actor. So that's going to be an interesting read. Because I love him anyway. He's brilliant. And two things left, um, last Christmas I had the Lenny Henry, not last Christmas, Christmas before, now Christmas 21, my wife bought me a signed edition of the Lenny Henry first biography, uh, which details his school and his growing up up to when he became famous. This one is the follow on to it, and as you can see, it's called Rising to the Surface, and it's another signed edition by the brilliant Lenny Henry, and my wife bought me that. And... <laughs> <laughs> to show I'm not complete intellectual where it comes to reading, um, I try to get this every year. My wife tries to get it me every year. Now, bear in mind, you know, if you're not intellectual, you won't be able to read this. You've got to be of a brain. It's the new Viz Annual. Now, Viz basically is the Beano for adults. Let's just say that. Uh, it's full of stupid stories. It doesn't take itself seriously. So there's cartoons in there. There's, there's ridiculous over-the-top accounts of people's lives that obviously don't exist. There's stupid letters that people write in that obviously they haven't written in. Uh, so yeah, it's basically a good, fun read. It's a nice, thick book as well. And my wife always manages to get me that. So that's brilliant. Uh, I've also had, which I'm not going to show you because it's in the other room, I've had a tin in a triangle shape, because I didn't know what the hell it was till I opened it, of Toblerone. And my customary, um, off my mother-in-law, she gets one every single year, we get a Terry's chocolate orange. So I've got two of them to get through, because we already bought one before Christmas as well. Uh, but that is my Christmas haul for 2022. Now, like I said, we haven't been up to a lot, and 2023 has not started off brilliant. We're hoping it's going to be a better year. My mother-in-law went home today. My wife has gone back with them, um, and then she'll be coming back with my brother-in-law later. Uh, now, we've had a good time. We've had a good time. It's been a nice Christmas, but it's been a quiet Christmas. Now, I've seen quite a lot of posts where people on Facebook have put that they didn't have a brilliant Christmas or they don't really like Christmas much and some people have actually you know started having a go at them now just because I love Christmas I don't ram it down everybody's throat I don't go around saying oh yeah you should love Christmas blah 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 everybody's got their own reasons some people have got reasons for not liking Christmas some people haven't some people just don't like it you know some people like David Jason he sees it as too commercial he sees it as too bustling you know I mean you go down to town like we did a couple of days before Christmas and you can't move you know you've tried book a taxi it's going to take an hour and 20 minutes before it gets to you and you've got loads of shopping so in that respect no I don't like it either and it has got too commercial they are it is all about making money 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 and what brought that into real focus was a couple of days after Christmas in fact I think it was the 28th me and my wife went shopping uh, to the local Tesco and they actually had proper large Easter eggs for sale and it hasn't even it hadn't even hit New Year that's how sad it was in fact I'll tell you when it was it was the 29th uh, 30th it was the Friday before the new before the New Year it was on the 30th because we had to go up to Tesco Express because we needed a few groceries and they had full Easter eggs on the top shelf which I think, to be honest, is disgusting. I think it's completely wrong. I don't know why we do it. I don't know why we insist on trying to ram everything down everybody's throat every five minutes. You know, people haven't got over Christmas. They haven't got over New Year. They might have things planned for January. And you're advertising something that's four months away. 
I just think it's I just think it's stupid, you know, they, they need to ease back a little bit and just say, no, hang on, let's start selling them from the start of February. Because from the start of February, you've still got two months to get your Easter eggs. And, you, and let's be honest, if you get an Easter eggs, you don't need two months, do you? You don't need two months to get your Easter eggs, you just go out and buy them. So I think really they should only sell them from February onwards. Um, yeah, okay, Valentine's Day stuff, I can understand that because it's beginning of February. And by the time the New Year's finished, it's only one, uh, five weeks to go. So I can understand that, I can understand them selling Valentine's cards, but not Easter eggs. Not Easter eggs, please. No, 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 no. Now another thing we noticed over Christmas was how rubbish the television was. Um, for the last few days all we taped was like two programmes. And one of them was called The Midwife. Um, I'll do a review of that at some point when, we, when it's finally, finally finished. We're up to season, I think it's 12 now. And, and I watch it because it's informative, it's educational, it's dramatic. Uh, there's sometimes quite a lot of humour in it. I mean, some of the characters in it are absolutely hilarious. And it's a feel-good thing. It's a feel-good thing because there's not enough of them programmes on now. There really isn't. I mean, I was absolutely gutted that Doc Martin had finished because we've watched that for the last... We didn't realise it was 18 years it had been going. And we've watched every series. We've watched the Christmas special. And then we watched a brilliant programme uh, about behind the scenes. So that was really... The highlight of Christmas. Um, there hasn't been a lot on TV really. I'm quite upset about that. And if you look at the TV guide now and look at the TV for the next couple of three weeks, I tell you what, I, I can't see anything. I just can't. It's, it's like, right, okay, we'll tape and call the midwife. That's about it really. There's nothing else there. So mostly all we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading. I'm going to be doing jigsaws, going to be vlogging. Maybe a bit of gaming, catch up on some of the TV that me and my wife want to watch that we taped. And obviously that mum, it isn't for mum, it's for us. Um, and I'm reading another book at the moment. I'm about halfway through Kevin Keegan's biography. And um, I didn't realise how much, uh, how badly treated he was by Newcastle United. In fact, not Newcastle United, let's be honest, it was Mike Ashley. He was, was it Mike Ashley? Whoever owns it, whoever owned it, anyway. Um, they were terrible, absolutely terrible to him, the way they treated him. Um, and I can understand why, you know, he, he, he can't speak highly of them and he won't go anywhere near the ground. He didn't tell he wouldn't go anywhere near the ground while Mike Ashley was still in charge. So, you know, now he isn't in charge, then maybe he goes back. I don't know about that. But I'll do a review of that at a later date. It's good so far. It's good so far. Uh, and on that note, I think I'm going to let you disappear. I've talked your uh, ears off. It's a nice long vlog for you because uh, I'll be doing one probably once a week now. A once a week vlog, even if it's just a catch up vlog, just to say what we've been up to. Um, but Happy New Year, like I say to everybody. I hope you're at start to, to the New Year's a good one. And if it isn't, I hope it improves dramatically for you. Thank you for all your support. Thanks for the Instagrams, the uh, Twitters, the Facebook, and of course the YouTube. All my likes and subscribers, it all means a lot to me. It's what I do it for. You take care. I'll do another vlog soon. Bye for now.